So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my decorative painting techniques to paint in these images. So for those of you that are decorative painters, I'm going to be doing a side load float. I like to use an angle brush. I find that it gives me more control, especially working with these tight spaces on this peony. So I'm just going to start laying these colors in. And I'm going to do all my shading first. So. Now, if you've noticed, this piece coordinates with the backdrop or the floor cloth that was in the intro. So you find if you do a major statement piece for a room, like the floor cloth, or maybe a large furniture piece, a cabinet, or something like that. Then, if you stick with the same color palette and the same images, you can make coordinating pieces to go with it. So then, you've got a very you know, well-coordinated and beautiful home, and you've made all these pieces yourself. And you've been able to use these stamp images over and over and over again, so you can see how versatile they are. One of the reasons I really like using the Jumbo Stamps is basically because it saves me so much time. If I was going to do this project in the traditional manner of, a, of decorative painting, I would have to trace the design and then transfer it onto my surface and then paint all of it. And that just takes a lot of time that, you know, it's hard for any of us to find anymore. The peony box that I shared with you earlier, I did that box in less than four hours total. Base painting it, doing the faux finish background, stamping the images, and painting them in. If I had done that as a decorative painting project, I would have easily spent 10 to 12 hours painting that project. So you can see how much time and energy this saves you. Plus, it's such a value because you can use the stamps over and over again on a multitude of surfaces and you can still use them for stamping because there's so many possibilities. Okay, I'm, today I'm using an angle brush. I like it because it has this little point on it, so it makes it really easy to get into the little tight spots in some of these designs. So what I do is I pick my paint colors within the same family, and I did the shading with the red, my first shading with the red. And then to do my highlighting, I actually take a little bit of the red, blend it on my brush, and then tip into the orange. And if you look on my palette, you can see how the water is um, pulling up on here. That means I have too much water in my brush. So I can just come back over here and tap 
and then I'm going to come back and see if I'm okay. And I am. And if the paint gets across my brush a little bit too far, then I just come back and squeeze off the, the back end of the brush. And I'll pull that excess water and paint out of my brush. And then I'll go do my highlights. Now sometimes, depending on how much water's in my brush, I'll either just, and how much water's still on the palette, I may do my highlight and come back right into that same spot and not even reload my brush. So that's something when, as you gain experience, you'll know whether or not that's going to work for you or not. And it also depends on the kind of surface you're working on, if it's going to work. So because we're working on wood and we've already varnished the surface, it's smoother and it um, takes the paint easier. If you're working on an unfinished surface, like just a base coated surface with no varnish, then you're going to find you're going to need a, either a little more water or a little more paint to get it to go across the surface um, smoothly. So I'm going to rinse my brush off. One of the other tips for loading your brush for a side load float is when you tap your brush down, let's see, move this over. When you tap your brush onto the palette, this would probably be hard to see, but when you go down, when the sheen disappears off the top of your brush, that's when you have the right amount of water in your brush. And that's obviously a little, a little easier to see in person than it is here. But to do my shades, again, I load some of my base red into my brush, and then I just come back and tip into that darker color and blend them on my palette. This helps tie your piece together because everything um, is basically starting with this same color and everything's um, within the same family. So, and again, I can see I have a little bit too much water there, so I'm just going to pinch that off the back of my brush. And then I can go ahead and do my shading. 